Yeah, it looks. It's like a, it feels like a pool table. Cool. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's cool. I only have one yeah. Funko Pop, and it's Jack Burton. I have a Funko Pop of me <laughs> back there that my sister in law made me. That's cool. What? Yeah. You can have Funko Pops made of people. I mean, apparently, I did. I got surprised with it for uh, Christmas. So. Okay, that's cool. I have the only Funko Pops I have are the Prince ones. Oh yeah, yeah. My mom's a huge Prince fan. That probably makes you feel like shit that I've just. Yeah, I was about that. to say never, never say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jacob's only like twelve years old, so. Yeah, Jacob, twelve Jacob, years old. Jacob, I will fuck your mom. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that right now. I will fuck your mom. <laughs> Keep playing with me, sir. Keep playing. I'm coming to Ocean Springs. I will fuck your mom. Don't don't hey, play with me, sir. You're, you're gonna print. meet my mom when you come to Ocean Springs too, because she comes to all my shows. I have the Prince playlist to make her panties drop. You understand me, sir? You understand me? <laughs> oh my God! Uh, I can already she? tell this is going to be a fun one. Uh, Where's yeah. your mom? Is your, is your mom there right now? She's actually in the kitchen making lasagna. Go, I mean, go she's get a mom good right housewife. Mom. Go, go get mom real quick. Go get mom. Go get mom. <laughs> okay. Go get mom. I think Jacob's about to have a uh, a new stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an asshole, Jason. I'm such yeah. an asshole. <laughs> That's all right. We all are. <laughs> she must have known I was coming. She evacuated the building. So. <laughs> oh, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. You will he meet her, there. though. She's, she's going to be at the show. He was in there like, Mom, don't come out. Don't come out. Don't come out. <laughs> Under any circumstances, don't come into this room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we're live and uh, we're going. So whenever you are ready, Jacob, you can explain to them how we do this and we'll get rolling. Yeah. So basically what's going to happen is uh, I have an ad read from our Patreon that I'm going to do. We're going to play our theme music, which you won't be able to hear. Uh, and then... I'm going to come in and introduce you. Uh, and after that, we're just going to basically bullshit, talk about all your shows going on down here, try to promote a little bit. And uh, yeah. Try to hook you it. up with Jacob's mom. Maybe she'll pop up. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, play matchmaker. That's what Go this fan- podcast is all about. Go fan your mom right now. Ask her her favorite, <laughs> her two favorite Prince albums. And one of them better not be Purple Rain. I want to hear her two favorite Prince albums other than Prince of Purple Rain. I, want to, I, want to know I can this. guarantee you right now, one of them's gonna be Purple Rain. She's kind of other a basic than Purple kid. Rain. It can't. She can't tell me Purple Rain. I want to hear. I want to hear a real Prince fan for other music. I don't want to hear Purple Rain. Every that's... white person who's ever heard Prince says Purple Rain can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he have an album that's like just the symbol? Like it's not even named. It's just the Prince symbol. It's called the Love Symbol album, sir. Get it correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll take it, man. I am I am white and under thirty, dude. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> Your mama probably made you to that album. Anyway. <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm ready, Jason. Are you ready, right. buddy? Yeah. Here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, this episode of the Open Markets Podcast is brought to you by that dirty, filthy scoundrel of a motherfucker. BJ to blow. He knows exactly what he did. He would have started his own podcast, but he was too chicken shit. What a coward. Uh, but anyways, also a big shout out to Mr. Mike Eveland. Thank you for supporting our Patreon, www.openmicers.com. Let's start the show, Jason Robbins. <laughs> That music can only mean one thing. It is Wednesday night. It is the Open Micers Podcast, and my name is Jason Robbins. And I'm his funnier, better-looking co-host, Jacob Craig. (laughs) Our guest tonight is a comedian that you know from Comedy Central and Kevin Hart's Heart of the City, politically incorrect with Bill Maher. His five comedy specials, it could only be Mr. Mo Alexander coming to the program, everybody. Thanks so much for coming on, Mr. Mo. How are you doing? I'm alive and kicking. How are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm the same, man. I am the exact same. We're talking to you tonight because you are coming to the Juke Joint November 19th, my stomping grounds. I host a show there. I'm going to be opening for you. Man, it's kind of surreal that uh, you're actually going to be coming to Ocean Springs, Mississippi, of all places, dude. Well, you know, I got to 
when you when you start writing a new hour, you got to say all the little small places yeah. no one's ever heard of. So why the heck not? Why not include Ocean Springs, Alabama? Excuse me, Ocean <laughs> Springs, Mississippi, to that run. Yeah. So we were okay. there. you know, I, I want, I want, I can. I'm doing this run because I want to have some fun and do some things I haven't done. COVID shut everything down last year, so uh, I haven't been to, I haven't got to see small town America in a while. So might as well show my face and uh, see how many waffle houses I can destroy. Oh, sure. hell yes. We have so many Waffle Houses, Mo. I know. You have y'all, get more waffle no houses than you do y'all have more Waffle Houses than you do schools. Dude, you now. can literally <laughs> give directions by using Waffle House. You just be like, okay, go down here on this road, uh, take a right at the third Waffle House, and then yeah. on the second Waffle House, take a left. Like, literally, th- there's places here where there's Waffle Houses right across the street from one another. Literally. Yeah, there's... there's- one uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina has two Waffle Houses directly across the street for you to catty corner. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just weird. Yeah, that's same just here. weird. Yeah, <laughs> we have the same shit. I I, I disagree about giving directions because of Waffle Houses because mm-hmm. I've many a time waited for someone at a Waffle House for like 30 minutes before they text me like, I'm at the Waffle House. Where are you? And I'm at the Waffle House two miles down the road <laughs> from the other Waffle House that we were supposed to meet at. Yeah, it's uh, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We do have good barbecue, though. I know that uh, you're a bit of a barbecue aficionado. Oh yeah, you, uh, uh, you know your shit when it comes to the Q. I'm from Memphis, man. I don't play with barbecue. There's there's a couple things I don't play with: stand up comedy, Prince music, and barbecue. I will cut you over all three of those bitches. I don't care. <laughs> I will cut you over each three of those things. You do not play with me on any of those. So yeah, I'm for real about those. Well, yeah, I'll tell so, you, yeah. you, you, while you're here, you should try out. Uh, Pleasant's Barbecue, which is just uh, like maybe a quarter mile away from uh, the juke joint where you're going to be playing. All right, so I'll, if we pass by it, if we pass by it, and I can smell the smoke from outside, we'll stop in. That's yeah. one of the rules. And you know it's barbecue. good because it's Pleasant's Barbecue and used tires. Yeah, they sell tires you. there. Go fuck yourself right now. Do not play with me like that, sir. <laughs> I'm serious. You're not... <laughs> hey, you're you're from barbecue? the south, Mo. You understand. Barbe- you understand that you get the best food from the worst places. Like, <laughs> yeah, but you should if you if your barbecue is cooked over t- used tires, that's not good barbecue. I'm sorry, <laughs> that scares me. I don't need to taste it. Mm, this barbecue tastes of rubber. Mm, Vulcanized ribs. Mm, that's, that's well. No, that's what you do is you go there and you get some uh, you get some good used tires put on your car and you you go and eat barbecue while you're waiting. <laughs> Please tell me this is a real place. It's Please a real place. Real. I it's ate there barbecue. the other night. Yeah, it's great barbecue food. Barbecue and used tires. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. all go in there. We all go yeah. in there and start some shit. I'm telling you right now, we go in there, all three of us. We go and start I'm some telling shit. You, the ribs fall off the bone, man. They're so good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, there's also very... um, there's also Murky Water. There's so many barbecue places down here that you should hit. There's Murky Waters Barbecue as well. Uh, I don't know if this means anything to you, but UFC champion... Valentina Shevchenko ate there a few months ago. So, I mean, this is like a nationally acclaimed barbecue place, Murky Waters is. I would say go there instead of the used tire place, but, you know, that's just me. That's that's a phrase you don't hear very well. I'd rather eat barbecue here than a used tire place. That's uh, <laughs> something you don't really hear too much when we talk about barbecue. Yeah, we started a barbecue show on the, for the internet called uh, Mo Alexander's Barbecue Beatdown that pits some of the best and worst barbecue in Memphis against each other. The second season we have yet to film yet, but it's going to be Memphis versus all y'all. Well, wherever I do a tour, we're going to go to that city, put our Memphis barbecue, of Gazette City's barbecue, and then, you know, we're going to have commentary and make fun of stuff and probably buy some tires. I don't know what else. Yeah, you could come down here. You could pit Pleasance against, like, The Shed. And uh, I know there's a couple other barbecue places, but I don't, I don't frequent the other ones. <laughs> All right, all right. We're gonna go down there and check it out. And question: Did you start that YouTube channel just so you could get free barbecue? Is that, is that no? What? We started that. We started the channel because we got pissed off that somebody recommended us to go get some other bull, some barbecue that was complete bullshit. They're like, "Oh, you need to go eat to this one place." And we went by there and got a sandwich, and the sandwich had a fucking bone in. It. And I'm like, "Go to hell! Go to hell!" Because they didn't you have used tires tip. there. They didn't have used tires. They charged you ten dollars for a sandwich that had a piece of bone in it. And I'm just like, you know what? And then me and my girl got came back to the house and got high as hell and wrote an entire script of the barbecue beatdown, and that's how it began. Awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. man. 
How do you feel me? about um, commercial joints like Dickies and, and that whatnot? That's that's beneath me, sir. Is it? <laughs> that's I, beneath me. I'm gonna say this as straight as possible. I love a good Dickies. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Your mom says the same thing when she listens to Prince music. Anyway, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, that was before the show stuff people don't worry about it. i'm not really going off his mom no what we're, we're doing is we're trying to uh hook jacob's mom up with with mo is what we're doing because because she likes yeah. prince mo likes prince they both like barbecue so i think we, yeah. we we could hook jacob up with a new stepdad is what we could yeah. do here that's what we, we, hey we try my that. mom's still married guys i don't know <laughs> if this matters to anybody but hey, my i'm, in a, I'm in a poly relationship i'm in a poly relationship it's all good <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. My I my mom is gonna very much like you. I can already tell. She is the <laughs> sweetest old lady. She absolutely loves everybody. Dude, she's not old. She's only like five years older than me. <laughs> yeah, she's old as shit, dude. She's so fucking old. She is about to die, and we should all be sweet to her. Uh -huh. Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Retard. <laughs> but uh, dude, speaking of death, um, you died, Mo. What's up with that, man? Like, I came you back. Died, you came back. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Um, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real thing. I don't tell the story on stage anymore. That's from a previous album. But yes, yeah. April April fifth, uh, two thousand and fifteen. I was in the hospital. Uh, I had some blood clots in my lungs, and they were trying to take you know fix it all. And um, uh, something happened. I moved wrong. A blood clot got in the way and killed me and I was dead for two minutes and they brought me back and I was like, thank God y'all brought me back. I got to do an open micers podcast in like six years. And, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> seriously. And it, it was, it was Easter Sunday. It was Easter. I died and came back on Easter Sunday. So I found myself a much more efficient savior. Uh, none of this three day waiting bullshit. I came right back. So, you know, <laughs> did, uh, did you see anything when you died? I that's heard Biggie I music. Uh, I, had, I heard <laughs> Biggie music. That's all I heard. So that's all I know about. <laughs> heaven, if it's, if it's, either heaven or hell has a Biggie concert going on, it's gonna be cool as shit, man. That's all I know. Look, I'm just saying, if if I'm dying and, and I and I hear DMX, I'm gonna go towards it. Like, oh, you should, you should. You know, that's gonna be a fire ass party. I don't care where it is. Yeah, it's gonna be in hell. Like he was a bad guy, <laughs> but I'm going to that DMX. It'll be, music, it, it could be. It might be in hell. It's gonna be full of dogs and barbecue with used tire shops. It's gonna be real fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, hey, burning tires reminds me of home. I grew up down the street from a few meth labs. So Jesus Christ, what is wrong with you, sir? What is wrong I, with your? <laughs> have you always lived down there? Or is this a, di yeah. a different city? No, I live in uh, I live in Van Cleve, Mississippi, which is a very small town right outside Where? of Ocean Springs. Van Cleve, Where? Mississippi. Van Cleve, Exa Mississippi. Yeah. Exactly. It's Where as the bad as it why sounds. Can I, why can I hear the word "nigga" in that sentence? Why can I hear the word <laughs> "Van Cleve"? That just that just that nigga. That's just it screams it. What is wrong, Van Cleve? Because there's none there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's hey, like, Jesus. hey, God, man. Damn. I, I live in, in a prominently, well, I won't say prominently. I, I live in a good mixed neighborhood. There's a good mix of white and black people in my neighborhood. But there were also like three different meth labs. And I don't know if you'd know this, but when people make meth, they burn tires in their yard. Because when you make meth, it smells like burning tires. So, so they you're literally saying the burn tires. Joint is actually making meth and the tire <laughs> thing is a cover up. That's exactly what I'm saying. And we should go bust Pleasants right now. <laughs> They've been there for three generations, and they keep getting away with it somehow. This is some bullshit. This is some bullshit. Seriously, y'all, I like it. You should take a trip yeah. up to Van Cleve when you when you visit. Oh no, <laughs> I'm not, no, no. There's no reason for my blackness need to be in Van Cleve and have everybody stare at me like, "Where is that large Negro coming from?" I don't need that. Yeah, there's nothing here for you. We have one Pizza Hut. That's it. <laughs> Dude, Van Cleve is one of those places I'm scared to go to. So, hey, I don't... man, I live here, dude. I'm here right now. I'm so sorry. Nothing you know you bad free. ever happened to me. You know, you know you're free. You can't leave, sir. You can't leave. So. <laughs> I'm sure if you still sell Funko Pops, you can afford an apartment. 
you know what? I do have some pretty valuable Funko Pops, actually. You see how quiet he got right there? He wanted to say so smart ass back to me. He was like, I better be nice to this fuck. I got to open for him next week. I, 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 he's, uh, he's never moving out of his mom's house. He's got too sweet of a deal. Like, she babies him. And he doesn't have to do jack shit. Like, she I does everything for him. You yeah, have a race great. Car bed? You have a race car bed for real? <laughs> Not for real. But, okay, but this is for real. Um, last night, before the open mic that I host, I shit my pants. <laughs> and uh, I, had to, I threw away my underwear. And there's a little bit of shit in my pants. I, my mom just washed them. It's a great deal. Does he know he's live on a podcast right now that people are hearing something? He just hey. said he had, he just joked about having a race car bed. Then he literally told a family he shit himself <laughs> at an open mic. And, welcome, oh my god! W- welcome oh. to the open micers podcast. <laughs> Look, I, I'm going to need some drink. It, by the way, I told it on stage. I mean, how can you shit yourself thirty Dude, minutes? Dude, how did you go on shit stage? yourself? Like, are you sick? Do you my, got the COVID? What's happening? No. My asshole betrayed me. What did you eat? You're a I don't gr- know. you're a grown man. How did you shit your pants before an open mic? Look, everybody shits their pants every now and then. It happens. No, every they don't. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. People get sick. Some happen. You get cold. Some. It's going to happen to everybody at some point. But you just don't talk about it immediately on a podcast <laughs> the next day. Like you know what? I shit myself last night. And my mom washed the shit out of my asshole. It was great, huh? She go back. Uh, <laughs> showered me down outside. We smelled barbecue and mess at the same time. But I, hey, I have to admit, if I did shit my pants, my mom would probably be the first person I'd call. <laughs> like, mom, I shit my pants. Come get me. <laughs> Who else are you gonna call? I mean, it my. takes some love for your significant other to wash your <laughs> shitty pants. That's Come true. On. That does. That is true. That is. That is very true. It does take love for. Woo, this is the weirdest podcast I've done in 24 hours. Oh, God, this is weird as shit. So, Mo, when was like- the last time you shit your pants? <laughs> um, probably 2002. God damn it. Why do you know the year right off the top of your head? <laughs> I know. It's what happened in 2002? It's not, like that many, it's not like it happened that many times. So you, 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 it's memorable, okay? It's memorable. <laughs> it's like, what did you do to make you, oh, that's what happened. I ate that food that was bad, and I didn't know it was bad. And then suddenly, I'm in Vegas, like- and my ass is full. My asshole is opening up at a casino when, you know. Yeah, but 2002, that's a pretty specific year. I mean, that's just kind of like, what were you like at a, you know, at a uh, 9-11 anniversary thing and just kind of shit your pants like that? How you remember Whoa, what year man. it was? Or... <laughs> <laughs> there, are so many to there are so many jokes I am not saying right now because I want people to come to the show. <laughs> that's what I'm saying right now. I am actually censoring myself. Because there are so many as the towers fail jokes out of my asshole. I could do right now, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. Thank you, sir. I'm not going to do it. We are selling so many tickets right now, I'm seeing dollar signs. Like I this. am yes. I am I'm <laughs> I'm seeing I'm seeing dollar signs and the amount of Bitcoin. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing Bitcoin purchases hey, right now. I'll take right. Bitcoin hey. payment. I'll take all my yeah. payment in Bitcoin. Hey, real I talk. Think- do you guys believe in that shit? Because it's not real. What? Like Bitcoin? Bitcoin. It's not real. Of course, it's not real. But no money is real. Yeah, That's, we've all we've all agreed to something saying that money is real and this, this stuff has an intrinsic value, and that's why we accept payment for it. But there is no such thing as money. We're that's all true. agreeing. It's, it's so Bitcoin is as real as a dollar. I mean, which how? Is they, but but when you I think can't about buy it. any diet coke with Bitcoin. Yes, you I can. can't buy anything with it. One day yes, you will. You can. From you the gas station more... down the street in Vancouver, you Mississippi. Can... <laughs> you can. Well, no, well, you, 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 you're not dealing with money. You're dealing with a time period right there. That's a whole time period right there. You like in 1973 still. <laughs> so, yeah, I have to build a chicken. 73 too. more like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm berating. I'm berating your city, but I got to come play there next week, so I better stop doing that shit. <laughs> Well, here's the They're thing gonna love it. about Bitcoin is when you, how often do you use cash? Very rarely, right? I now, use it almost yeah. every day, to be honest. Honestly, I, do. I, I don't use cash anymore. I just use my debit card. I use, uh, you know, PayPal, things like that. It's the yeah. same thing as Bitcoin because it's yeah. all ones and zeros. That's all it is. Yep. That's, That's all good. it is. And That's I take. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to fix it so I can take Bitcoin and Ether and uh, XRP on my website right now. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, I take it all. Yeah, 
I just bought a uh, one of those unstoppable domains, so it's gonna be moalexander.x soon. And all my, you can just buy, you can just send money to those wallets, and it's oh, nice. cool. get, yeah, you can get merch from my uh, merch from my merch store through Bitcoin and everything. So yeah, dude, we got to do that. Just, <laughs> hey, you can do that, man. I I still don't understand how money works. I don't know. <laughs> That's that Van Cleave education is what that is. Yeah, dude. We learned arithmetic when I was in school, bro. That's what they called it. Arithmetic. Um, but Mo, Y'all being from being from Memphis, like, do you feel at home when you when you do comedy in the South as opposed to like L.A. or New York or something like that? No, I feel at home when I'm in Memphis. Everywhere else, I don't know you people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I feel at home. I feel at home. But you gotta understand, if, if there's a stage anywhere, I'm home. I'm good with that. If I have a stage, I don't care where you. I don't care where I am. If I have a stage and a microphone and a bar stool to chill out on and some decent tequila, we all party and it's all good. So I don't, you know, every and it's not like I'm gonna change it. My show from L.A. to here, uh, it'll be changed in the fact that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do till I get on stage. But other than that, you know, we just gonna have fun. That's true. I like going I, I to Memphis. Just... I've been to Memphis a, quite a few times. I actually played the New Daisy yeah. once when I was up there. Never really? got to eat barbecue, though, because every time I was up there um, and I try to find a good barbecue place, you always know the good places because they're the ones with, like, a line of people that's, like, 100 people deep to get in. I'm <laughs> like, well, that's obviously the best place to eat, but I don't want to wait, like, four hours to get in. Nah, see, you got to go to the places. See, that was, you see a... You see a line outside of a barbecue place in Memphis. Those are tourists. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, but we going down okay. the street. We going down the street getting some tops and be good, be done with it. But if you played the new day, all you had to do to walk down the street to the uh, Rum Boogie Cafe, got your ass some ribs, and we would have been good. Well, so I'm down street right now. It's <laughs> half a block down from a uh, new day. I used to work at the new day. They used to be a bouncer there, so I know it very well. When were you a bouncer there? Ooh, uh, early nineties. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna. I didn't know if you were there when I was there because I played there in 2004. Who who are you playing with? Who are you doing? I, I was with a band called Fall as well, and we were opening up for some band. I don't remember who they were, but they were okay. some like almost like a boy band at the time. Okay. And, they, and the only reason we got p- picked is because their manager saw like listened to one of our songs, and it was like our slowest song. They didn't know where that we were kind of like a metal band. <laughs> So oh, we come in and just like a bunch of metal dudes just like like destroy the place and it's like a bunch of like you know preteen girls in there so it was a weird night. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a weird night. That that building has seen some weird shows. I'm gonna tell you right now. When I worked there, I was I was working there for uh, my life with the Thrill Kill Cult, uh, oh, Fishbone, yeah. Biohazard, um, all those fun shows. See, I went to see Fishbone. Fishbone was supposed to play Biloxi once. And I was yeah. so excited, man. I love Fishbone. And um, I went uh, went to uh, – got my tickets, went to the place. Everybody's waiting, and they were playing with Funk Junkies. And the Funk Junkies got on stage and was like, well, guys, uh, we hate to tell you this, but uh, Fishbone got in an accident in their bus. They're not going to make it tonight, so we're just going to play a really long show for you. And I was oh, like, all God. right, I like Funk <laughs> Junkies, but you know, I was disappointed because I wanted to see Fishbone. Yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah, I've seen Fishbone at least five times, Damn. at least five times. I love Fishbone. Fishbone. Yeah. I've seen I've seen Bad Brains a few hundred times. Uh, Damn. When they did their reunion, when they did their reunion thing back in the mm-hmm. early two thousand, got to hang out at HR for a little bit. I was like, this is such a cool day. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah, he's a weird dude, but good. good, good. <laughs> Do you guys like Uncle Cracker? Shut no. up. <laughs> what? You don't like Uncle Cracker, dude? No. Well, I'm gonna kill myself after this. Uh, don't don't joke about that. <laughs> Why? Don't joke about that. You should never kill yourself. You're how do you? Twenty one. Yeah, you shouldn't kill yourself. Wait till thirty. Then you can kill yourself. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Wait until the trial's over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait until the free trial's over. Mull over your options. You know, see, if you y'all, can't get a better, give, better y'all deal give me somewhere. so much trouble. Y'all give me so much trouble. I'm gonna... Dude, you, you, oh, you know what I just noticed, Jacob? You do kind of look what? like that one kid that's on trial today for uh, killing hey, those people. Hey, <laughs> dude. Mean, I, the kid with the AR-15. 
<laughs> you mean Crab Baby? Yeah, Crab what's baby? his name? Oh, Kyle Rittenhouse or some shit Kyle like that. Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle yeah. Rittenhouse. Yeah. I, dude, you kind of look like him, and that's scary. <laughs> I am, dude. I'm like just a little bit more country. Like I'm a little, just a little bit. If I was a little bit more country, I would mm. be those guys. Like I just a little bit. Do you? I could very well Jacob, be in that position. Admit what? on this show if you own an AR-15. I don't, dude. I don't own any guns. Okay, good. I I would shoot myself in the foot so fucking fast, dude. Like, I cannot be trusted with a gun. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I shit myself last night. You want to trust me with a gun? No. <laughs> you stop talking about that. No, dude. When it happens, like, it's, it's comic gold. Is no, there anything it's not. funnier than a grown man shitting himself? There is a comic. There's a excuse me. I don't want to call him a comic. There's an open migrant in Memphis who's been doing the same. He shit himself story for five years. <laughs> he's like, "Why won't you take me on the road? Because you talk about shitting yourself for five years. Go fuck yourself, kid. Write some jokes. Get away from me. You put, I'm not gonna so- put you. In, I'm not gonna put you in my car with you potential. You shitting. Get away from me, you son of a bitch. Get off me." <laughs> It's so funny because it's like that everywhere where you have the same person on the scene doing the same shit for five years yeah. and you go on the road and they're like, hey, man, bring me along. It's like, nah. It, yeah, no. And they get mad at me. I'm like, like the comics who are worthy in this city, and that's, I mean, they're for real. They're good professional comics who live in Memphis. And then there's the rest of them, and the rest of them hate me. And I'm like, I'm okay with that. Go fuck yourself, okay? Yeah. You hate, you waste your time by being mad at me while I'm on stage and I'll See you later. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how most comics feel about open micers that have been open micers for, like, way too long. Like, you should only be an open micer for, like, a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, move I mean, either, either not to be, not to be too on topic, but shit or get off the pot. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even need the pot to shit. Yeah. You stop that. You stop that, sir. <laughs> go f- go see if mom is back. We want to see if mom is back right now. Go, go find mom. Right. I think I heard her coughing. Hold on. I'm going to check. Right. She's a smoker. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an asshole, Jason. I'm such no, an asshole. No, you, you're fine. No, we're all assholes here. So um, before he comes back. Uh, well, yeah, sir, it, was, it was my dad, so I don't think yeah. you want to talk to him. Yeah. You're a Prince fan? Yeah, man, I don't care. And <laughs> now, now, you know, I've never met right. Jacob's dad, but I don't, I can already tell you he's not a Prince fan. Just, well, yeah, no, my dad has three teeth. Okay, well, and they're in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> hope they don't actually get washed with his shitty pants. <laughs> hey, my dad does not shit. His pants. Nothing no, worse than looking in. Pants. Oh, my shitty pants. Okay. Nothing yeah, worse yeah, than look. looking in the washing machine, seeing some shitty drawers and some human teeth. <laughs> hey, I, I, at least I threw my underwears away. I threw the underwears away. I sacrificed those brave soldiers. So you threw the underwear away, but then you put your shitty ass on your clean jeans, and then. <laughs> well, I wiped. I cleaned myself up, but there was a little splatter on the uh... jeans from the underwears. And you went on I stage really, like that? I, I don't have enough yeah. tequila to deal with this tonight. I really don't. I need more tequila. I, I heard that you are that you drink tequila like a fish takes to water. I've heard that you could down Every some fucking tequila. Every story you've ever heard. I don't know who have told you these stories about me on tequila, but they're all true. Yeah. All of them. I, I will not deny the stories of tequila. I have my record in the... There was one night we were doing shows in uh, somewhere in Ohio. And me and the owner of the bar got to talk about tequila. And he was a big tequila fan. And he opens up the drawer and brings out this really special fancy tequila. And we started doing a couple shots of it. And, okay, so fast forward, I'm on stage maybe 30 minutes later, uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes into my show. He just walks on stage and, like, brings that same special bottle of tequila, sets it down on the table in front of me and says, have fun, fucker, and <laughs> walks off stage. And I'm like, you motherfucker. You son of a bitch. You know what this means. They're going to make me drink this whole thing on stage because they're assholes. And I did it. I didn't. I did. I did like an hour and a half show, drank the rest of that. Somehow I was drunk enough for my feature act to be spanking me on stage. It was stupid. It was. 
Yeah, I love tequila too, so we might have to do some shots when you get oh, here. Oh, that's, that's going to happen. Yes. That's going to happen. I don't have to drive this time. We'll be drinking heavily, so yes. Yeah, my uh, divorce party, I drank a whole bottle of Patron and uh, ended up at a drag show wearing a uh, uh, Viking helmet. <laughs> That, that sounds, sounds like every drag. That sounds like every drag show I've ever been to. San, so that's how my night ended up. <laughs> <laughs> I still have the Viking what helmet. Tequila? What, what's your what's your brand of tequila, sir? Uh, I like Patron. Uh, the the silver. That's okay. probably my favorite. Okay, you should try. This my, this, I I really need to get corporate sponsorship from this one company called Espelon. That's my favorite new tequila. I haven't My tried I want to try the Rock's new tequila. I haven't tried no, don't it you yet. Dare. Don't you dare. Is it? Don't you dare. It's nasty? Don't you fucking dare. Hmm. No. No, it is not allowed. Do not do that, sir. <laughs> okay. It's, Good no. to know. Don't. Yeah, official podcast stance. Fuck Dwayne the Rock Johnson. All right, well, we let me like him tag uh, the Rock in that. and so Fuck he can... the Rock, dude. <laughs> you know, you know, tag, put Mo Ale- tag him in Twitter. Mo Alexander says, fuck your tequila, Rock. Fuck your yeah. tequila. Yeah. And, and <laughs> fuck the movie The Rock starring Sean Connery and Nicholas Cage. <laughs> fuck that movie. <laughs> fuck Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> fuck everything that has to do with Rock. Fuck Chris. Well, no, I like Chris Rock. I shouldn't say that. Chris yeah, Rock Chris is cool. Chris is cool. Have Chris you ever met good. Chris Rock? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. What was that like? Where'd you guys meet? Uh, I opened for Chris many years ago in in town in Memphis, and uh, okay, yeah, many. Years ago. It was after that. It was right after that first special of his. He blew up. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it was that first one. And then he yeah. came to Memphis and did it. It was so Chris is one of these comics is crazy because he released an hour uh um stand up special. And then he came to Memphis like six weeks later and had a whole new hour. And I'm just like, okay, yeah. that's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah, he he was the guy that really started the uh, the the pathway that most comics take now. Like Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, those kind of guys. They released their hour, and then they tour with their new hour they already have written and ready to go while their Netflix hour is playing because everyone it, wants to see them and buy their tickets. And Chris insane. Rock was the first guy that did that. It's insane. Hey, it's insane. I mean, I I. I covid shut me down so i did not really write a lot last year but the stuff i wrote is coming out you'll see all that this week next yeah. week but most of the stuff is just uh it's because i recorded i recorded an album that still hasn't come out because of the covid shut everything down uh i re- we, i'm the first time to record an album inside of sun studio i was gonna ask and, you about that yeah it's, it was badass i'm not gonna lie about it, it was bad because my, my producer dan slizzle Slissel, Slissel, yes. He uh, he told me this idea about recording at, 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 at uh, Sun Studio. I was like, yeah, that's never going to happen. And it, he set it all up, and then I walked in the back door of Sun Studio. I'm like, holy shit, this is really happening. Oh, my God, this is so cool. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was freaking. I mean, serious, I'm in, the, I'm, in the, I'm in the engineering room, and I'm like, holy shit, I'm not supposed to be in here. Yay. And <laughs> it was so great. So, but, so yeah, so I, you'll hear, like, two jokes from that album. Everything else you want is not on there. So, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting how how much material you have to write these days. It's yeah. interesting. I mean, yeah. they're trying to, between social media and all that crap. I mean, I'm not really good on social media because I don't want to write 15 minutes of new jokes every single day. Uh, if something comes up that's really stupid that I need to talk about, I'll do that. But pretty much, I just uh just hang out and uh get on stage i'm not one of the social media comics i'm not I, i'm that's not me that's not me i have stand-up material that i can that happens and makes the world stupider and tries to make it not as stupid i should say how about that yeah, yeah. i'm weird i'm a weirdo so what was it like yeah. being in sun studio like that because that's just like dude, that's just freaking history right there dude it was i mean I, i'm standing on they got the little x the elvis presley x yeah. that's why i'm standing recording the album like this is so fucking cool <laughs> this is ridiculous uh it was it seriously i didn't think it was gonna happen i'm like they're not gonna let me in i'm banned from graceland how are they gonna let me in here <laughs> you're banned and from they, graceland yeah i'm banned from graceland i am i mean what are happened you gonna, there are you gonna tell us uh, that story or just leave us hanging <laughs> um Used to you, I, I got banned before there was a comic. I got banned as a, just a regular human being 
um, because I had friends from out of town who wanted to go to Graceland, and I never wanted to go to Graceland because I don't know if you know about people from Memphis. We don't give a fuck about Elvis or Graceland, okay? That's yeah. all the tourist people come in. We're just like, like I always try to leave Memphis between Elvis' birth and death week. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here because I, I was working in a mall one time, and then a plethora of Elvi came through, all Elvis impersonators. I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm shutting the store down. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with 35 different Elvises in this store today. Go to fuck yourself. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but I'm I'm banned from Graceland because um, years ago they used to give tours where they had a tour guide. Now they just give you a little headset tour thing. But uh, um, I. I was the youngest person there by 50 years. Me and my wow. friends were the youngest people there by like 50 years. And I scared too many old black, old blue haired white women. Um, because when we got to the jungle room, I mean, I made commentary the entire tour. Everything I saw, I made commentary about it because I'm like, this is trash. This is, this is, disc- this is trashy. This is horrible. <laughs> and, uh, we got to the jungle room. Have you ever been to jungle? Have you ever been to Graceland? I know I've never been. Nah, well, neither. the jungle room is famous because it's like a leopard exploded in there. <laughs> it's like le- it's seriously wall to wall. If it was a 1972 pimp Cadillac from a black exploitation flick, that's the jungle room. Okay, <laughs> that's what it is. And we got outside. They won't let you walk into that room. You have to stand outside. But uh, I got banned because I began to sing George of the Jungle as Elvis would have done it with karate kicks and all. And uh, too many old women started saying I was blaspheming Elvis and screaming and crying. And six security guards picked me up and carried me out. That's awesome. Now, now <laughs> I know I'm banned. I know I'm banned because that happened in like the early 90s. And somewhere in 2000, I don't remember the year because I didn't shit myself that day. But in some year in the early 2000s, I had other friends come and wanted to go to Grayson. And I'm like, eh, they kicked me out 10 years ago. I still, they can't remember me now. I walk onto the property. Some little dude in a uh, golf cart comes up and tells me I can't be on the property. So they have my face up somewhere at Grayson, and it makes me happy. I wonder if they know who you are. I wonder if they know, like, oh, this is comedian Mo Alexander, and he's not welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I'll put that in my Wikipedia. <laughs> you should yeah, put that in there. You're the only comedian to be banned from uh, Graceland. Well, probably yeah, not the only comedian. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, no, I know I'm not the only comedian because there's another comedian named Charlie Veracola. Uh, very funny dude. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell his story. The story about it, the story goes with him was he made it through the entire tour and got to the uh, the grave, the cemetery site, and then he was crying really badly. And reached into his pocket and set a large order of McDonald's fries down, and that's when he gets attacked. So, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome, Mo. How many places are you banned from? Do you have a good estimate? A lot. A lot. I'm banned from so many places. Yeah, I am. I, I used to. I used to be banned from Perkins uh, restaurant in Memphis because me and the guy got in a fight. Me and the owner got in a fight. Um, I'm banned from Graceland. Uh, I know I'm. Yeah, what else have I been banned from? I'm, there's a bunch of places. I'm banned from like 13 different radio stations. Um, uh, that's actually true. Um, I don't. I, you know what? I'm gonna have to come up with a whole ban places I've been banned from. I was protested by the Westboro Baptist Church once, which made me happy. Um, please explain yeah. that. Um, I'm Mo Alexander, and they hate everything I like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? That makes perfect sense, actually. And I will uh, fight for the people. I mean, I stand up for everybody. I don't give a fuck if you're straight, gay, black, white, whatever you are. If you got something, you're cool with me unless you're an asshole. And yeah. they don't like my stance on certain things, so they protested me and helped me wow. sell out seven. Helped me sell out seven shows. So, <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they even understand what they're doing, like that they're helping you with your audience. I know. I, I don't think they get it. I'm just like, I wish I would tour with me. Come on, come protest my show in Ocean Springs. Let's sell this bitch out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for because the people that already like you, I mean, the Westboro Baptist Church protesting against you, I feel like would make your fan base be like, well, I gotta go see him now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm I hate everything they stand for. So you know, I'm pro gay. I'm pro trans. I'm pro everything. I don't. I don't give a fuck what a person is. As long as you're cool people. We all good. I pissed those guys off on Twitter once. How? 
because uh, it was after um, Leonard Nimoy died. Oh. And uh, I dared ask if uh, Westboro was going to uh, um, protest his funeral, too. And, of course, they tweeted me back, and we got into a Twitter war. Because they were like, of course we are. I'm like, fuck you, you assholes. Wow. Yeah, they're pieces of shit. Because it was because when he died, they were they were like protesting everything. So that's why I immediately thought of them. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they get into it with like the Foo Fighters at one point? Yeah, they got into uh, it with everybody. I think the, the no recently the Foo Fighters played a rolling concert yeah. outside the <laughs> outside their little house thing. And it was hilarious. They were on a flatbed and Dave Grohl just tearing up the shit. They're just playing. I'm like, oh, I love you guys. I love the Foo Fighters. Yeah, me too. Dave Grohl is the man for sure. And Pat Smear, of course, of uh, <laughs> formerly the Bad Brains, right? Then you yep, play yep. for them? Yep. Yeah. See, I knew it. My punk rock knowledge is still up here from high school. I'm impressed with that knowledge, sir. I'm impressed. Thank you. Yeah, I used to be a uh, huge punk head in, uh, in high school, man, because I was so fucking angsty. I wanted to fight everybody. Mm-hmm. So I was just so into punk rock. More like Blink-182 and Green Day, but I definitely have That is not punk That's rock, not, sir. I, no. I, I'm stop. Just stop. <laughs> hey, no. man. It's pop punk, and it counts. It's not no, as it heavy. Does not. It no, stands it does in the not. same shit. No, it does not. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It will not. Never. No, that's not punk. That's not punk. That's not punk. What, about, need, uh, I, I, what about social distortion? Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah. Social, social I, I, I awesome. fuck with social distortion a lot. Mm-hmm. I love them. They're great. Social distortion, misfits, bad brains, misfits, uh, dead yeah. Kennedys. Uh, oh God! Descendants. <laughs> the Ramones. I, I, I unironically will blast the Ramones. I, I actually really. Hey, am hey, you should. Hey, yeah. you should. Nothing wrong Listen with to- that. Put some Fugazi in there. Come oh, on. yeah, Fugazi. Okay, I, yeah. I saw them in New Orleans, and I vomited on the sidewalk <laughs> at that show. <laughs> I did a, I did a show at the New Daisy, and the next night I was still at the I still went right back to the New Daisy because Fugazi were there. So I just went in the back and just hung out with the guy. <laughs> I was just like, hey, I'm just a comic. I was just here last night. Just wanted to stick around and watch the show. And they're like, oh, cool. Right. Fugazi is freaking great. If you've never listened to Fugazi, Jacob, that's more homework for you this week. No, yeah, I, I, I know Fugazi. Very okay. few things in this world I know about stand up comedy, punk rock, shitting myself. And, I'm an expert uh, in all. Some minor threat. Got to throw some minor threat minor in there. Threat. Too. Minor threat. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, no doubt. 100%. <laughs> you really just want to be stabbed. He just, wants to be, he just wants to get stabbed. I can just tell this right now. He just wants to be stabbed. Bo, if, if you stab me on November 19th, I just want you to know that uh, it would be a you're, great honor. <laughs> if I stab you on November 19th, you're just going to shit your pants and then have a story about it, about how Mo yeah. Alexander made me shit my pants. That's I know okay. what you're going to do. You're not getting- I used to be an EMT. I'll uh, I'll stop his bleeding, and uh, his mom can That's clean right. up his poo poo drawers. And uh, oh my god, <laughs> you two are ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. Th- this is this has been one of the most fun episodes we've had in a while. Um, don't know why I had to bring down the mood by being so sappy, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jacob. <laughs> what's your okay, Jacob? What's your favorite Funko Pop up there? Oh, my favorite Funko Pop, I have, uh, obviously I have one of myself that my sister-in-law made me that's very sentimental. Uh, I also have a John Constantine Funko Pop. I love John Constantine, my favorite DC Comics character. Hold on, I have to interrupt you real quick. Now, is this the John Constantine from the comic book or the Keanu Keanu Reeves version of John Constantine? It's from the comic books, from okay. the uh, from the Hellblazer series. So it's it's the Sting version of John Constantine. Yes, yes. Sting version. Uh, it was exclusive on. See, the I just comic showed off my nerd cred, motherfuckers. My nerd cred is real. <laughs> Hell yeah, we got nerd, we got punk rock, we got barbecue, pooping ourselves. Will uh, you stop that! I'm not in that part. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Um, no, I, I really like that one because it was limited to 10,000 pieces, and I mm-hmm. have one of those 10,000 pieces. So I don't know how much it's worth because I'll never sell it. I'm a huge Hellblazer fan. I even like the Keanu Reeves movie, to be honest with you. It, uh, we can't nerd out about that. It's a good movie. It's not – it's – It's a good it, movie. It's not John it's a, it, It's a great movie. It's not it, – if they had named it Constantine or something else, you know, <laughs> yeah. something slightly off. It's watchable. It's not John Constantine. 
But it's you a know, good movie for what it is. I'm the just, guy the ma- I'm just wondering if uh, in the new um, Sandman series that they're doing for Netflix, are they going to be able to have John Constantine in it? They're changing. So, no, they're adding. They're changing it to his ancestor, Joanna Constantine. Uh, okay. Yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. We're gonna have so much to talk about, now, Alexander. We're, we have a lot in common. <laughs> I, no, I feel a, like I may be your albino illegitimate son. <laughs> I don't know. Show me a picture of your mama. I don't know. If, 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 never mind. Yeah. Did, did you travel down here around 2000? Because that would be around the time that Jacob was conceived. Yeah, around 1999, yeah. You know, I was on tour with Keenan Abbey Wins at that time, and we did play Biloxi. Oh, no. You're my <laughs> daddy. <laughs> <laughs> You can't convince uh, me otherwise. <laughs> some somebody's getting some back child support is what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, some stories about Biloxi, Mississippi that weekend. So, hmm. where where did you guys play in Biloxi? Did you come to the Coliseum? No, we actually back back in the day there was a uh, casino. What was it? Uh, there was a grand. Was it the grand? Yeah. The the, the Grand Casino? You did the Grand yeah. Theater? The Grand no, Theater, not, yeah. yeah. No, there, there was a casino. There was a riverboat casino called the Grand back then. Oh. We played that thing. Yeah, yeah, they, that, yeah. Got, that got the short in Katrina. Yeah, so. yeah and which I predicted in that. I predicted when we worked with Kenan because I was like, there, it was raining really bad that night. And I used to fuck with him so bad all the time. Because it was raining real bad that night. You could feel the boat, the riverboat actually move back and forth, right? <laughs> So on my way to the stage, I, I I pop in his green room and I was like, "Hey man, you see that? You feel the boat move?" He's like, "Yeah." Well, I'm like, "Uh, our people already had one free boat ride. I hope we don't get another." He just threw something at me to get out of the room. <laughs> and then those were the first words out of my mouth on stage. And you see Keenan on the side, just like, "What the fuck? I can't believe you said that." Like, yeah. <laughs> you hired me. You know who I am. You know what I do. Yeah. Um, Kill, crushed, just yeah. destroyed. It was- which so you played the Grand in Biloxi or Gulfport yeah. Biloxi? Oh, was it Gulf? It was Gulf. I can't remember if it was Gulfport or Biloxi. I don't honestly remember because there were two of them down there back then. I, I think it might have been. Yeah. I think it might have been. I think you're right. I think it might have been Gulfport. I think. I get confused honestly. Yeah. Well, they both got well, destroyed. <laughs> well, yeah. It, it, was it is the same things. fucking place. Yeah. Biloxi and Gulfport are the same exact place. Just like five seconds from each other or something, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right next to each other. Yeah. So that that's that did happen back then. So nineteen ninety nine. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh Jason clipped that. Yep. Can you clip that sound I for us, clip please? That and uh we're going to have to do a uh um we have to do a uh paternity test when Mo comes to town. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ask for your spit as soon as I see you. It's like, hey, can you spit in this vial for me? Which is ironic because if, if, if I am your father, that's not why I asked for your mother. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm a horrible human being. I'm a horrible human being. All right, and boys, well, we need to know. start winding this thing down. We got about ten minutes left. So, uh, <laughs> what do we want to talk about before we let we let Mo off into the into the night? Let's see. I mean, I guess we better talk about uh, the tour coming up, man. You're coming to yeah. Pensacola, Mobile, Ocean Springs, all the places. All the places, all the weird little places that no one ever goes. Uh, Bill Hicks used to call that the UFO tour. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're doing so. We start out tomorrow night, which is today. Wait, today's we're starting off with the Eleventh in Macon, Georgia. We hit up Lafayette, Louisiana, Pensacola, Jacksonville, somewhere in South Carolina, uh, Mobile, Daytona, Ocean Springs, and Knoxville. On this next two weeks, we're hitting all the way. It's me, it's my good friend Esteban, who's kind of new to comedy, probably been in about a year and a half, but he's funny. And that's what I like. I like funny people who are weird and twisted and dark. Hmm. And uh, so it's us two traveling around. And uh, I, I every city has local comedy support on those shows. Mm-hmm. So I get to meet a bunch of new comics, hopefully, and hang out. And um, I think, my, I don't know, I, I think one of the conditions about uh, Ocean Springs because I got my friend Jimmy James living down there. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, I, has he been at open mic lately? Yeah, he uh, he comes to the open mic very fucked up and forgets his set and how he did. I'm going to slap him. I'm going to slap him. I'm going to slap him. <laughs> yeah. 
We'll it's very party. depressing for me too because I, I I know I'm only 21, but I'm one of the more veteran comics on the scene. I've been doing comedy since I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy asks me for advice, and I give him advice, and then he doesn't take my fucking advice, and it's just so frustrating for me. <laughs> but I love him. Yeah, to death. I know you're. I, I know you're death, paying. Really. Trust me, sir. I know you're paying. Yeah, but yeah, he he will he'll probably be on that show. He will definitely be drinking tequila with us throughout oh, the night. That's going to be happening. That's going to be happening. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. Uh, we, um, have early, we have an early drive the next day in Knoxville, but we can get in town early, start drinking, do the show, have some fun, get in trouble, uh, you know, talk about uh, my new merchandise. To say, you, the, you people are stupid. Get the hell away from me. T-shirts are back. Which you can get thought, at slapthestupid.com. Uh, we'll put that link in the description, by the way. MoAlexander.net. Go there. That's the one. The other site's messed up. We don't know what okay. happened. Yeah, MoAlexander.net. Uh, save the world. Slap the Because <laughs> I always have shirts that are really messed up. Uh, I have pussy and cookie shirts. You'll see that joke <laughs> later on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have the Mo Alexander has a possum shirts. I have these are my favorite ones. Though. This because this is the uh, fully vaxxed and mostly waxed tour shirts. And they have you people are stupid. Get the hell away from me on the back of I them. Mean, you think about what that whatever you will, because it's gonna be fun. I'm telling you, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely gonna get one of those shirts. I uh, my hope for this tour is is that you can uh, you can come and see our comedy scenes and see what we're building, and uh, understand, man, there are some actually really killer comics around, especially Mississippi. Mississippi and Mobile have really killer comics on these scenes. So I'm very okay. excited for you to see. Uh, what your openers uh, can do. I'm excited to see that too, because I trust me, I'm, I'm everywhere, and I, I see some. I mean, the exception of Denver, the Denver comedy scene. Denver comedy scene. Don't ever sleep on them. If you don't know about Denver, you ain't yeah. done nothing. Go, go hang out in Denver for a month, and you'll be just like these people are insane. I love going there because they make me work harder. I'm like, oh god, oh, yeah. y'all are getting so much funnier. Now I gotta get better than you people again. Thank you. That's so. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all the people that open for me in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, man. I'm excited to be one of those people. Um, Jason, are you are you gonna come to the show, buddy? You gonna yeah, come I'm hang coming out to the show. Yeah, I'll be there. Wish Jacob, I was. Jacob, wish I was opening for you too. Damn it! <laughs> I didn't even hear. Just about not it. good enough. You know. I know. I'm not good. Jacob. Enough. Jacob made me laugh in an email. He was like, yeah, I used to listen to you in high school. I'm like, go fuck yourself, sir. Go fuck yourself right now. <laughs> yeah, but high school I... was like two years ago. <laughs> uh, I didn't yeah. know that at the time. I'm like, okay, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. I, was like, I remember back in the day I was in school. I'm like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, that was, that was only four years ago for me. Okay, so. I'm okay with that. that. That's a good album. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I guess we're going to be getting out of here, boys. Uh, Mo, so great for you to come and talk to us. This has been one of my favorite episodes of the show so oh far. yeah I, i'm sure I, we'll I, be able to sell some tickets off the back of i this. appreciate it man i really really appreciate you helping me out promote the show and everything and i look forward to coming down there uh everybody on, on listening right now follow me on twitter at mo alexander uh my instagram mo alexander mo alexander basically if you type in mo alexander anywhere you'll get me unless you get the football player and then ignore that one but <laughs> <laughs> Well, usually no, we don't really... we don't release these shows till Friday, but you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and release it tonight. So uh, okay, because I yeah. love this episode so much. I want everybody to hear it ASAP. Well, thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. That's great. We have to have you back again. I can't wait to meet you, and uh, yep. we can do some tequila, and hopefully yes. you'll try some uh, burnt tire barbecue, and uh, we'll find out. Why didn't out. they name it that? That would have been a better name. That's burnt true. tire. What what's it called? Paradise? Oh, it's called Pleasant. 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 Barbecue. No, it's not Pleasant. There's burning tires next door to yeah. me. It should be called Burnt Tire Barbecue. <laughs> well, How do you do? Let your fucking marketing team not do that. Okay. Well, to be fair, the the people that own it, their last name is actually Pleasant. Narcissism fucks everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's been around since the 1960s, actually. Believe it or not. But it uh, they should change their name, reband brand. To burnt tire barbecue, get your used tires next door while you get a plate of barbecue over here. That's the marketing part ploy right there. I'm always thinking. <laughs> I, maybe we should you should come down here and open up a barbecue joint across the street. We'll call, call it, it burnt tire. 
<laughs> I'm always thinking we'll be we'll just sell weaves instead, just to be ironic. Yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, we could sell meth. How about that, guys? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. I have a few <laughs> contacts. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> I know some guys who have been busted before, man. We can get Dude, this. You going. live in Van Cleve. You can talk to your daddy. He knows all the mess people. Don't even play with me like that. You know he does. <laughs> <laughs> playing poker with him right now uh, all right well mo thank you so much thank for coming you, on the show man we're got to get you back here again soon anytime and, uh, anytime we'll, we'll see you at the juke joint in a week and a half and if you'd like to email us you can email us at open micers podcast at gmail.com we are at open micers instagram and twitter open micers podcast on facebook om podcast takes you to our patreon where as little as a dollar a month get you an extra episodes and uh you get it a couple of days early as well so go help us keep the lights on and we'll see you guys next week awesome thank you everybody for watching on twitch and on youtube later on so thank you guys and we'll see you next week